really glad to have uh, with us today uh, Mr. Rafael uh, Badziak, uh, who is the billionaire uh, magnet. Um, Thanks for having me. Uh, so, uh, as, as usual, we're going to have uh, you know, a casual discussion. I uh, would uh, love to learn more about, uh, about you, about your background, your up and coming uh, you know, uh, projects or uh, you know, uh, things that you have. Uh, in the next uh, 6 to, to 12 months and also more important we would like to, to share your opinion about, um, uh, about both entrepreneurship but also sustainability. Okay. So uh, uh, just, just, just tell us a few things about you, uh, you know, very briefly, um, uh, you know, what is your, your background, your career uh, and uh, you know, uh, the, interesting, uh, the interesting bits which are up and coming. Okay. Very simple career. I was pioneering e-commerce in uh, Europe back in the 90s. I, so I am in business maybe for 20 years now. I built the first online shop for sporting goods for bikes in German speaking market. One of the first uh, online shops in that industry in Europe. That was back in the 90s. This developed and uh, became a multi-million uh, dollar company. Then I went into investing in digital assets, meaning uh, at first internet domains, later cryptocurrencies, and um, so made uh, money with, uh, with them as well. But at some point I realized, you know, my entrepreneurial personality apparently isn't enough. I could see my competitors growing faster and so on. For many people, what I did or would consider quite successful, but I didn't feel successful with that. So uh, I was looking at others and they were, you know, more successful, growing faster, bu building bigger companies and um, um, so I realized I need to, to improve on that and then I embarked on, on this project that you, uh, you found uh, or you inquired about, uh, about the, this book. So it's about the long term, the long term vision, it's about exactly. you know, how do you take what you have and build upon it and how do you create a different mindset that will allow you to grow even further and faster perhaps on the long term. Exactly. So to build a sustainable uh, long term business that is not um, dependent maybe on uh, fashions and uh, like business cycles or um, because, you know, my business is an e-commerce business, so it's very um, like de dependent on, uh, on technology or uh, I thought it would be dependent on technology, but then I learned other and uh, they are the best entrepreneurs, the billionaires that I research right now. Uh, they build really sustainable businesses with armies of uh, employees that um, you know survive all these cycles, all these uh, crises or maybe changes. There is an, one billionaire uh, in my project, by the way I haven't uh, mentioned that, uh, I have interviewed 20 plus 25 uh, billionaires for a book project that's uh, oh, called the Billion very Dollar. Very interesting. Talk, talk to us <laughs> about that. Yeah, the Billion Dollar Secret uh, to learn from them uh, how they think and what in their personalities made, made them so extremely successful in business because as entrepreneur I want to learn from the best. And one of the billionaires, for example, uh, talking about sustainability, managed to um, uh, to um, keep or develop his multi-billion dollar company. So it's a, it's a huge company, a billion dollar company throughout uh, complete, I mean, um, not only like business cycles, but um, he, he, uh, he pivoted his companies while being a, a billion dollar company. So uh, uh, he started in retail uh, in electronics, then he went into um, uh, into media production. So he was producing, generally producing uh, videos for uh, film um, for for film companies for the huge five or six uh, film companies, producing, um, packaging them, distributing them in Brazil. 
uh, but then um, and, and then he went into uh, media production actually I mean media, uh, um, the physical media production and went through all these different like at first they were uh, VHCs then they were CDs then the, they were DVDs and then the, uh, they were also the, uh, the data um, uh, um, and the de and yeah, the how do you how do you call it data um, notions when I mean the, the, the data mediums yeah right? they were also uh, the the uh, data mediums like uh, you know the CDs the pen drives and so on and so on uh, the uh, disc uh, uh, discs at first. And the Blu-ray discs and everything else. Exactly. So uh, he went through all these uh, changes. And then there were the final dematerialization of, of actually uh, data so that no medium, uh, physical medium were necessary. And he managed to pivot his company as well, uh, you know, through, uh, to a plastic, plastic manufacturing company and then into a petrochemical uh, company. So he managed to, um, to inject the sustainability in a business throughout complete changes in, uh, in industry, like disruptive changes in industry. And this is what, uh, what many billionaires are really good at, right? And you can so, so you've got a book out. Tell us a bit more about the book, when it is coming, when can we buy it, when is the launch date? So the launch date is set to, uh, to June 12th. The book is called The Billion Dollar Secret, uh, 20 um, Principles of Billionaire Wealth and Success. And it's based on face-to-face -face interviews with 20 plus billionaires. This is the first-hand knowledge of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world. And what do you uh, look to achieve with that? What is the, you know, the, 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 if you can summarize it in a couple yeah, of sentences, yeah. what is the, the value of the business to someone that's going to read it? Uh, so the, the thing is following it. It comes from my story, actually. You know, I, uh, at some point I realized there is not enough... Um, uh, in my personality is not, uh, <clears throat> or let, let's say, at some point in my in my business, I realized there is something missing in my entrepreneurial personality. And I uh, decided to learn from uh, from from the best, and I interviewed these uh, twenty five uh, self made billionaires. They are all of them. They are billionaires and they are self made. So they come from zero to billions within one life lifespan. To find out how what is their uh, personality, personality structure, what, is, what are the habits, what are the thinking methods, uh, what is the uh, world perspective, um, and so on and so on. So all these principles um, are, and I was looking for the common denominators of all, um, uh, of all these people. They, this is the first project in the history of world that somebody, uh, you know, managed to put together uh, two dozen billionaires for a book project uh, and I did it globally so from different regions different um, uh, industries different uh, age groups also cultures religions um, and looking for the common denominator what are the essential or the uh, the principles that are common to all of them in generally what do you need in your personality how do you need to think and behave in order to uh, to achieve such an extreme success in business, so because uh, a proper extreme, I need mm -hmm. to uh, to to explain, uh, the, you know, because most people don't really realize the difference between a millionaire and a billionaire. So billionaires, extremely rare creatures. One in five million people in the world is a billionaire. So this is extreme success, right? That, so you did almost the impossible, <laughs> almost. You, yeah. you, 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 you've, uh, you've won the lottery multiple times, yeah, in a sense. So, yeah. um, so focusing a bit o on the sustainability clean tech side, mm -hmm. um, so throughout your interviews with these kind of billionaires, mm -hmm. do you think that um, impact investment, sustainability, uh, triple bottom line approach, does it sit within their, their remit? Does it sit in, you know, is it within their scope? Is it... Um, you know, do, do they invest? Do they think that there is an opportunity here to leave a legacy more than just being a billionaire but actually leave something to everybody or help, help uh, you know, the environment while making money perhaps? 
Yeah, so there are sev se several, I would say, perspectives to, perspectives to that or several viewpoints. Uh, first of all, um, sustainability generally like business sustainability is a big word uh, word for them if you you can imagine if you have an army of people like 200,000 employees you would really have to take care that this business don't fail <laughs> doesn't fail that it, it, it holds for a long time because you are responsible for all these people right and on the other hand there is also um, uh, so, so to say, this notion uh, that billionaires have uh, that you need to uh, take into account all stakeholders and stakeholders are not only the investors, not only the employees, not only your suppliers, but also stakeholder is the community or uh, um, let's say this, um, the society you live in, you live in because uh, none, uh, there is no business or a business can be sustainable in a society only if it is of value for the society, if it brings something to the society. In, uh, it, it's not uh, when it is a parasitic to the society, uh, the, society the society will try to uh, you know, get rid of, of that, right? But if it is of value, of uh, advantage to the society, it will be supported by the society. And you need for your business, uh, you know, all um, your, uh, your employees come from the society, your, uh, you know, your business partners and so on. So you need to be respected in the, in the society you know, of value. So in that case, of course, environment is one of the parts and you can see it in many, I could give many examples of the billionaires I have interviewed. Uh, that really, uh, you know, care about uh, about these topics. Let's take the uh, Peter Stordalen, the hotel king from uh, from Scandinavia. Um, he owns two hundred hotels, uh, Nordic Ch Choice hotels, and they, these are the very best hotels in uh, in Scandinavia. And uh, so he uses uh, this triple uh, bottom uh, approach yeah. uh, in his business. Because he says, you know, uh, and it is good for his business because uh, he says if the customer has a, a choice between paying this amount of money in a hotel and the same amount of uh, money in another hotel, but in another, in another hotel he knows for this money, a part of that goes to, uh, let's say, save one mile, one square mile of Amazonas, then uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a clear choice for him, right? So it's it's actually uh, good uh, for business uh, when people when your customers see you care for the environment and you you know you uh, it's not just about making money. Right. So I've heard this expression a few years back um, uh, about how the consumers change, and uh, in a presentation I don't remember who was giving the presentation it was, it was more than ten years, but he was discussing about creating the bohemian bourgeois as they call them. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we move away from um, the, the white collar uh, worker or you know, the, uh, the white collar uh, culture into a more um, a conscious consumer, that the consumer is actually putting a lot of pressure to businesses to be more sustainable, to be more caring, to have an impact on the society, on the community, but also on the wider planet uh, you know, uh, over, over the years. So this is something that you've noticed within your interviews and your yeah you absolutely. Know, your I not, I've, I mean it's it applies also to my actually it um, impacts also my own business, the e-commerce business, the you know the bikes, uh, because if uh, you can see, I mean in uh, in our industry, um, actually right now you you do more much more revenue with e-bikes than with the traditional bikes. Why and why? Uh, why is it green? Uh, so this this whole immobility e and so on. It turns out that many people um, in areas like London, also like uh, in uh, um, in urbanized areas, they switch from uh, f uh, from uh, from a car to e-bike, and uh, they come to to work with uh, with an e-bike. And uh, yeah, it's, it's faster to get through the traffic and uh, it's cleaner, right? 
and uh, in uh, in uh, Germany and I think maybe in UK as well uh, the employers uh, they start to support uh, the employees uh, in in, uh, in in that effort and uh, you know subsidize uh, these e-bikes to uh, for them to get to uh, to work on e-bike because it's also better for uh, for the uh, employer because the uh, the employee is is just fit, fitter and uh, healthier. and healthier, right? So uh, the leave times are lower, right? So it it's it somehow comes together. Everything comes together. Excellent. So uh, uh, you will allow me, uh, uh, you know, one one last question. So how do you think that through talking with this kind of people um, uh, has changed you? So what was the impact of your research to Raphael? And what can others perhaps start learning yeah. so let, let's, from that process? Uh, let, let's say, let's start maybe with, uh, with uh, what impact it had on my company, right? Because it's, this is somehow that I can quantify and then I maybe say something about me. Uh, so first of all, uh, since I was actually, for the last five years, I have been traveling almost, or let's say more or less 50% of my time I was on travels. So I couldn't really do business development, much of business development in my company, like change process, processes and stuff like that. But what I, uh, what I could since like maybe one year, one and a half years, I had this formula, this 20 principles of billionaire thinking. And some of the things I have learned, the soft factors I have implemented in my company. So how do we think about ourselves? How do we think about the customer? How do we communicate? How do we perceive the customer ourselves? And so on and so on. And so this, I only, let's say, implemented these soft factors. And this alone doubled the revenue of the, of the company and tripled or almost quadrupled uh, the profits of the company within a year right and uh, so this is the impact uh, uh, on the on the, the company. tangible the, the ta tangible yeah. that and, and this is really the soft factor this is only about this is the mindset the mindset uh, and so i didn't implement any actually like billionaire methods right uh, skating methods and stuff like that uh, the impact on me is, of course, uh, I would say a different approach uh, to business, uh, right? Uh, so one one of the things, uh, sorry, one of the things is um, scale of your thinking, and actually every every principle that I write about uh, in in the book, there is a discovery that I made uh, that changed me internally. So this is uh, so one of the things is um, you know approach uh, to to thinking big the other um, the other thing is uh, you know this uh, taking risks uh, risks um, um, mindset and also how i uh, think about uh, mistakes about uh, failures um, there are so many actually you know you would need to read the book in order well, to, well, to, well, to well, see. We, we expect you to get it i'll be first in the line there um i i expect uh, an invitation if you have any left uh, by that time and i would love to 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 read it um and i think that uh, uh i look forward for all these little gold uh, golden nuggets inside the book yeah. where you know people can uh, can actually read uh, and and implement and you know just change change the way uh, we think as entrepreneurs and, you know, yeah. t uh, take the leap of faith and, and believe in ourselves and persevere ahead, which I think, uh, as you said, was one of the, you know, one of the, let's say, common denominators that uh, came up from, uh, from your book. So, uh, uh, Rafael, thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure to have the billionaire magnet here with me. I look forward thank for the so next much. time. Take care.